We talked briefly about axons and myelin sheaths. So remember, you've got oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system and Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system that are going to wrap around those axons and form a covering we call the myelin sheath. So this covering is very, very rich in lipids and proteins. And once an axon is myelinated, then those action impulses or nerve impulses are going to travel much, much faster along that axon than in an unmyelinated axon. So most of the unmyelinated tissue that we see is going to be composed of some axons, but mostly of dendrites and cell bodies. So the Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system start to form these myelin sheaths around axons during fetal development. So it's sometimes when I'm teaching this uh, to my students in class, I'll tell them to think of the Schwann cell sort of like a pizza dough. So you roll it out very, very, very thin, and then you start wrapping it around a long structure. We'll say uh, maybe a broom handle. So you take the pizza dough and you wrap it around and around and around and around that uh, broom handle, and the covering that you are creating is what is known as the myelin sheet. All right, so the neurolemma is the outer part or the exposed part of the membrane of that Schwann cell. Now, remember, we've wrapped around and around and around and around the axon. So here's one Schwann cell, here's another and another and another and another. There are little spaces between those Schwann cells where the axon is exposed. Those areas where there is no myelin sheath are known as nodes of Ranvier. When we, again, when we start looking at action impulses and transmission of that action impulse down the axon, we'll talk about the importance of those nodes of Ranvier and how they do increase the speed of transmission. In the central nervous system, remember the oligodendrocytes myelinate the parts of axons. So each oligodendrocyte has about 15 or so sort of broad, flat processes that spir spiral around the axons in the central nervous system, forming a myelin sheath. So the nodes of Ranvier are more widely spaced, but again, we have some tissues that are myelinated and some that are not. So when we look at this tissue histologically, or we look at a fresh sample of this, you see that some of the tissue appears white in color. So in freshly dissected brain or spinal cord, some of the regions look white and glistening. That's where we have myelinated tissue. So mostly uh, myelinated fiber tracts, which are bundles or single axons. The gray matter, of course, is going to be unmyelinated. So in that fresh dissection, the gray matter would be unmyelinated tissue, mostly composed of the neuronal cell bodies, uh, some dendrites and unmyelinated axons. So here we can see an example of this in both a drawing and in uh, an image of fresh, freshly dissected tissue. So you can see that in the spinal cord, there's white area that surrounds an inner core of gray area that's somewhat butterfly shaped. So here you see it in the drawing, here you can see it in the fresh tissue. So all of this would be white matter, and here is your gray matter. Of course, much easier to see here, white matter and gray matter. But you see the same thing in a frontal section of the brain. So here in the cartoony drawing, you have the gray matter forming most of the outer part of the brain, and then the white matter within. And if you look at a fresh frontal section of the brain, you see the same thing. So a thin shell of gray matter covering the surface of the largest portions of the brain, which are the cerebrum and the cerebellum, and then the white matter found within, which are myelinated fiber tracts. Before we begin talking about action potentials in these neurons, we need to learn how to classify them. So we do so based on their structure and their function. Structurally, we classify them based on the number of processes extending from the cell body or the soma. Multipolar neurons usually have several dendrites and one axon. So the first image you see here, you've got uh, 
lots of dendrites and one axon. So most neurons found in the brain and spinal cord are this type and also all of the motor neurons that we're going to look at when we start uh, discussing the neuromuscular junction. Bipolar neurons have one main dendrite and one axon. So here's our cell body again. You can see one main dendrite, but then you have multiple branches and one axon. But again, remember we talked about these are classified based on the number of processes that extend from the cell body. So only two processes, one dendrite and one axon, making this a bipolar neuron. So these are found in the retina of the eye, the inner ear, and the olfactory area of the brain. And then our third structural classification is the unipolar. So uni should tell you one. So the dendrites and the axons have fused together to form one continuous process that emerges from the cell body. So during development, the dendrites and the axons fuse together and become that single process. The dendrites of most of these unipolar neurons function as sensory receptors that detect a stimulus such as touch or pressure or pain. So a lot of these, of course, are going to be found in those sensory areas. And then we classify neurons based on their function. So the direction in which the nerve impulse uh, travels in respect to the central nervous system. So sensory neurons, remember, Afferent, A for admit, contain uh, sensory receptors usually at their distal ends down at the dendrites. So these are going to be neurons that bring signals into the central nervous system. So most sensory neurons are going to be unipolar in their structure. Motor neurons are efferent or efferent, remember E for exit. So these are going to take action potentials away from the central nervous system to effectors. Remember, effectors are muscles and glands that are in the peripheral nervous system through the pathway of cranial or spinal nerves. Most, neuter, uh, I'm sorry, most motor neurons are usually going to be multipolar in structure. And then we have the interneurons or the association neurons that are mainly located within the central nervous system between the sensory and the motor neurons. So they're going to be the ones that integrate and process that incoming sensory information and then elicit a response through um, the motor activity, so through the motor neurons. So most inner neurons are going to be multipolar and these are about 99% of the neurons we have in the body. So here we can see a diagram of this. So uh, here we've got the central nervous system. Remember, this is in the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system is everything else. So here we have a sensory receptor on a sensory neuron that's usually going to be multipolar. That stimulus, of course, is going to be processed in the cell body and then taken into the central nervous system. So here we've got the axon coming down and those axon termini are going to release chemicals that are then going to stimulate the dendrites uh, of the interneuron within the nervous system. Remember, this is our processor. Okay, so these are usually multipolar. So the nerve impulse, I'm sorry, the nerve impulse then travels down the axon to the axon terminal still in the central nervous system where we're going to release neurotransmitters or chemicals that are going to stimulate the dendrites of the motor neuron and then that nerve impulse will travel out to the effectors and cause a muscle to contract or a gland to secrete.